What's up, guys? Welcome back to Film Was More Fun. I don't know how many times I've started this intro, maybe six or seven. This is one of those trying to do a video, the video's not turning out, and I keep failing and I keep flubbing and feel like I'm all stiff and, and whatever. So I'm just going to call it out in the video right here and say, hey, I don't have my groove, my video mojo's off, um, and then we'll just take off from there. So with that out of the way, welcome to Film Was More Fun. Today I want to talk about a, a recent roll of T-Max 100 that I shot. I double exposed this roll between some landscape shots of Three Mile Island, which is a nuclear power plant out this way, and also some old newspaper articles that documented the, the meltdown scare or the, the accident that happened uh, back in the late 70s. For anyone not familiar with what Three Mile Island is, it's just basically a, a nuclear power plant facility that Back in 1979, there was like a small radiation leak, and I say small radiation leak, that's a big deal, you know? But as such, it was all over the news, all over uh, you know, newspapers, headlines. It was a, a pretty big thing, understandably. So if you guys want to read more about that, I'll put a link to the wiki below. It's, it's pretty crazy. And a quick side note, locals out here call Three Mile Island TMI. Okay, so when I first moved to the area, I hear people saying like TMI this and TMI that and you know, over TMI and I'm like, what, too much information? And they're like, no dummy, Three Mile Island. Okay. So we fast forward to 2020 and my wife was talking to a friend who lived in the area during this whole disaster and she actually collected all the newspaper and, and articles that she could find. And she said that she could borrow all these articles to just check them over and look at them because, you know, it's, it's pretty interesting. So when I came home one day, I see this box full of these old newspapers, you know, documenting this disaster. I mean, my first thoughts were like, project time. So the plan is to shoot this roll of T-Max on the tabletop, uh, basically highlighting different angles and, and different views of these newspapers and articles, and then shoot the entire roll again with landscape images of, of TMI, you know, different views, kind of repeat a couple of views, and hopefully come away with some happy accidents. We don't, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Before I get started, though, I want to show you guys the easiest way that I've found to line up double exposures uh, if you're going to shoot an entire roll twice. Now, on my Nikon F3, you can see, you know, I've, I've marked out the shutter window. So I always get the leader started, I get the film nice and tight, and then I basically mark on the film, I advance it, you know, one time, get it nice and tight, and I mark where the shutter window is on the film. You know, this is going to help me find it again. After I roll it back up, I'm going to know exactly where that frame is so I can line it up for the second go round. One other quick note, too, is rating your film. So when you're doing double exposures, you want to rate at one stop less than normal. So, for example, this is a roll of T-Max 100. Uh, I'm going to shoot both times, or when I shoot the roll each time, I'm going to shoot it at 200 ISO. So I have 100 ISO film and I want to drop a stop. So I'm going to shoot at 200 on the tabletop and then I'm going to shoot again 200 when I'm out. The second time when I'm shooting the roll on the landscape, I'll shoot 200. And then I just go ahead and I develop normally for 100 and you get some primo images. Okay, we got all the tabletop shots set. Uh, before I head out, I want to get everything set for the second go-round, which all I'm going to do in that situation is rewind my film and uh, basically take that section that I marked out, and I'm going to line that right directly back up with my shutter window again, uh, get it tight, uh, shut the film back, and, you know, wind it a couple times, and theoretically, and it's worked out perfect thus far, uh, most times. You know, it should line everything up and your frame bar should be pretty much on par with the first time you shot the whole roll. So I'm going to get the gear packed up and then we'll head out to TMI.
Now, being as that we're all photographers, uh, we all probably have really strong index fingers. You know, we hit that shutter button, I don't know how many umpteen times, right? Um, so if you could do me a favor and just use that super strong index finger that you hit the shutter with is just smash the like button. Um, you know, the video would be super grateful. The video would be grateful. No, I, I would be grateful. The video would benefit because we'd get more Google juice or more YouTube juice. More people would find the channel um, and, you know, it would help more people. So if you could do that, that would be super awesome. Coming up soon, uh, I'm, I'm going to do like a new series. Um, it's going to be a quick series, maybe made as a playlist to release one time. And it's going to be for like brand new people, you know, answering questions that, that might come up for somebody just getting into film. So I'm going to ask your help. If you guys could think of anything that maybe when you started film that was kind of confusing or you wish you knew, please drop me a comment because I want to kind of compile all this, make some videos, just some real helpful content for people just starting out, you know, in the game. Because I, I was thinking, you know, the, the, there's strength in numbers, right? And film photography depends on more people getting in and enjoying the hobby. So the more people we can kind of get hooked, right, the, the, you know, the, the better it is for us. So, yeah, if, if you guys can think of anything, you know, drop it below and, and I'd be appreciative. So that's it for me. I hope everybody's well and... We'll see you soon.